Sam. It's Ave, your kinkologist, spilling a little kink into your day. Y'all know how we do. Email me your kinky entanglements, and I get you right with my personal feedback and that of my tarot cards. Now, this is for mature adults only. If you wear still drawers and a stiff shirt, this ain't for you. Nothing is too kinky or too crazy to discuss. And y'all know we run into crazy damn near each episode. Remember, kink should always be legal and consensual. I don't care if you're butt naked draped over someone's lap getting spanked or wearing a dog collar and a diaper sucking somebody's toes. We're going to tap it all. For a slot on the show, hit me up at ave.kinkologist at gmail.com. Y'all ready for these emails? Let's get it. Up first is Thine from South Carolina. Ave, I've been with my man for eight months now. Things were real chill at first. My dude is buff and his sex game is epic. At present, I am the breadwinner. I get that jobs are hard to come by nowadays, so I don't say much about it. My issue began several weeks ago when we were having sex. He became almost hostile, slapped me, flipped me, and called me names. He was like a beast. He was calling me all types of names, pulling my hair, calling me his bitch. I didn't say anything the first time, but now it's getting to be the norm every time we have sex. And get this, he ordered a big ass cage and put a cot in it with these awful orange gel suits. He really thinks I'm into this shit. Honey, I am fabulous and ain't never been locked up. I don't mind keeping a roof over our heads, but I didn't sign up to be anyone's prison bitch. Hmm. Hun. Oh my God. Oh my God. Okay. Okay. We're going there. So we are going there. Not the prison bitch. Not the prison bitch. Sorry to bust your fabulous bubble, but that's exactly what you're playing at. I would love to be a fly on your wall when this first began. I would love to have been there when you came home and you saw this cage somewhere in your house. Did you say the bedroom, guys? The bedroom? Okay. So I would have loved to have been a fly on the wall. When you saw that cage, like, what was going through your mind? Like, I, I, I couldn't even begin to phantom what I would be thinking if I come home and I walk into my house and there's a freaking, like, what, freak, what kind of cage? Are we talking about a dog cage? Are we talking about a, uh, like a cage um, around a fighting ring? Like, what type of cage? My mind is stuck on that. I, I, I can't get past that. I need to know what kind of cage this is. Okay, so, so let's get into this. I'm not exactly sure where he's looking but I do know that there are jobs out there. There are jobs out there. My, my question to this is, you said that he went out and bought a cage in these uh, gel suits. Where the hell did he get the money for this stuff? Okay, we won't go there. It's good that you're willing to hold things down. But sometimes that's an invitation for someone to become lazy and dependent. Now, if you're not feeling the sex games, you got to speak your truth. Like, I mean, I, I can't really imagine myself being in a situation that I don't want to do. Like, when he showed you this cage and these gel suits, what, what, what went through your mind? And did you go along with it? Did you play along with it? And at what point did you feel like, okay, this, this isn't something that's, that I want to do. This is something I want to get into. Is it a situation that you're afraid to come out and, and speak your mind? Or is it that you're so into the sex and the way he looks and things of that nature that 
you know, you're just throwing caution to the wind and whatever's whatever. I need to know these things. Now, if you're not feeling the sex game, again, you have to speak your truth. You have to. Because if not, things are only going to get worse. If you're simply going along with everything and you really don't like it, it's going to fester and become a major problem later. Face it now and move on in whatever direction that may lead. Let's take it to the cards. And the first card says prosperity. See, that's what I'm saying. You, can, you cannot prosper. You can't. A relationship is not going to be healthy. It's not going to progress to where you want it to progress. Not if you've got these festering situations happening. Now, the fact that you wrote in, that lets me know that this is a situation that bothers you. You're going along with it for the sake of the relationship, sake of the sex, the boyfriend, keep him around or whatever. But it's not something that you really want to do. And with that being the case, it's just going to fester and fester. And then it, it's going to be everything. It's going to be every little thing. More and more things are going to start to bother you. are going to start to get on your nerves. And it's just, I'm telling you, it's just going to be a slow fall to the end. So you might as well get it off your chest now. The next card says necessary change. See, and this is exactly what I'm talking about. Something has to happen. Something has to change. Otherwise, it's, it's not going to work. It is not going to work. I can promise you that. Something has to change. The next card said discard it. Discard it. Disrespect it. And see, this is what I'm saying. You've already said that you didn't sign up to be anyone's prison bitch. So what I'm getting is that this act is making you feel less of a person, demeaning. And if that's the case, again, it, it, it's just festering. Do you not see that? It's just a festering pool of mess. Because what's happening is you don't want to play this game. You're feeling outside of character. Uh, demoted, if you will, and it's only going to get worse. It's only going to get worse. You, you've got to speak your truth. You've got to talk to them. That's the only way this is going to get any better. Or if a person is not willing to meet you halfway on some things, if you're telling somebody that something they're doing uh, makes you feel a certain way and you really don't like it and they're continuing... Uh, and if that's disrespecting you or making you feel out of character and they refuse to change that, then, then some decisions have to be made. Okay? I want you to have that talk. Hit me back. And now we have Anitra from Chicago. Help. Okay, Ave. I am in a real-life Game of Thrones situation. My family split up all over the northern and southern states. Anywho, I met my boyfriend two years ago. We've been tight, even bought a house together. Last summer, we got engaged and were recently talking about having a baby. Imagine my surprise last month at my great-grandmother's uh, birthday party when my aunt hugged us both and asked him if his father was still in Memphis. I was like, how do you know his father? She laughed and said that his father was Uncle Joe, my grandmother's sister's son. The rest of the night was awkward. Things have been strange since we've been home. I mean, I know I love him and he loves me too. But how can we do this even though we're like second or third cousins? Wow. Okay. See... I, I understand what you're saying. I feel you on this. I really do. But, you know, when it comes to situations with family, that's just a very, very sticky situation. As, you know, because it, it all comes down to a moral, a moral 
uh, compass kind of thing. Because some people will be like, you know what the hell with it? We've been down all this time. We done done the do. We done bought this house. We didn't know. We know. I mean, psh, to hell with it. Let's just continue. And some people would be so bothered that they, they, they just couldn't do it. So in a situation like this, it's not really something that anybody could give you advice because it all comes down to your moral compass. Can you guys move forward from this? Can, can y'all say, you know, I mean, it is what it is. We've already done everything. I mean, or is it a situation that you look at him, he looks at you. Y'all worried about what the other family members are going to say. Now that this get out, what are, what are y'all friends going to say? What are people going to say? Again, it all comes down to your moral compass. What you can and can't deal with, what you can and can't put up with, what you're willing to brush off your shoulders. Ultimately, you have to be the ones to decide this one. This is, um, it's a lot. It's a lot because, again, in a lot of these situations, what winds up being the deciding factor is a lot of people allow outside influences to uh, to enter into this. And then they be so concerned with what outsiders think, what the public think, what other people think, that they they tend to just throw their hands up. So you guys have to really sit down and have a true conversation about this. And y'all both need to bring y'all feelings to the table. Because if, if you can't do it, if you're really bothered by what people are saying, if you're disgusted by it, then you already know your answer. Let's take it to the cards. The first card says devastation. And, and and I get that. I totally get that. Because I as I said, a situation like this is very, very hard. Very hard to deal with. And the fact that you guys did not know, you know, to find out something like that is it's gotta be like like earth shattering, really. Especially you said that you guys bought the house, y'all talking marriage and to find something out like that. I can I can only imagine. It would be very, very devastating. And the thing of it is, again, second, third cousin removed. I mean, it, that's got to be a call that you make. But I do want to say this. If you guys truly love each other, and if you can get past what the public will say or think, then you guys have to do what you have to do. You understand? If you can get past that, then you do what you have to do. Um, from what I'm hearing, you don't really live around your family members. You stated that you guys had to go to the birthday party. So the bulk of the family, from what I'm gathering, lives, uh, what, down south or something? Uh, so really, it's, 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 it's your call. Because all this time, nobody knew. And uh, again, it's, it's your call. Because if you can't get past it, then it's really nothing else to talk about. The second card says, calm, practical, close one door before opening another. So again, before y'all take this step into the marriage, anything like that, Y'all got to get over this first. Find out where your moral compass is at. You understand? Years ago, I would have been like, oh my God, oh my God, I got that. But, you know, the world has changed its view on a lot of things. A lot of things are accepted. Uh, when you look back in the old times, a lot of, th a lot of these things seem to be coming back around, you know? Uh, again, I don't really get into biblical or, or anything like that, but I do know that they've done that back in the day. So, and this is a situation you guys didn't even know about. So it's not like you knew this was your cousin or he knew 
you know, um, again with this, you, it, it just all comes down to that moral compass. It all comes down to the matters of the heart. And the third card says self-limiting attitudes. And that's exactly what I'm saying. Self-limiting attitudes. You guys have to sit down and discuss this. And when you discuss it, you have to be open and honest. Like, what's really going on? Don't worry about hurting my feelings. Don't worry about hurting his feelings. Be honest about it because if you guys try it, if y'all say, okay, well, you know, we've been here, we've done this, so let's just continue. But if y'all not going in it with that kind of feel like, you know what? Uh-uh. We didn't know. So we're just going to continue. Like, we don't know shit. Let's keep going. We're going to do this. I got your back. You got mine. Boom. If you're not going, if y'all both are not going into it with that type of attitude, then it's just going to crumble. Even if you do give it a try, it's going to crumble. You you have to. You have to be on the same page with this one. And you have. And the only way you're going to know that is you have to be open and honest with one another. Hit me back. Let me know what happens. Up next is Amina from New York. Girl, Ave. One thing I hate is a poser. Why this fool presented himself as some GQ Wall Street type when he doesn't have a pot to piss in? I started to get suspicious when it appeared he was wearing the same suits or a variation of the suit every time we went out. We dined at restaurants and even went on a carriage ride. Suffice to say, a few months have gone by and the routine is the same. But get this, why we went out for dinner the other night and the manager came to our table stating that this was the last night we'd be able to dine there and he worked the meals all. Girl, a bitch was embarrassed. I demanded that he come clean. It gets worse. So, he has a friend that works with the carriages, one who works at the cleaners, and one who works in the movie theater. He's been working off our dates, and I've never been to his place. That was being treated for mold because his address is the men's shelter. The lies are real, and I am done. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Wow. That's a lot. That is uh, hmm, not a poser. I haven't heard about a pose in a while. Ooh, what the hell? This is what I'm talking about. This is crazy. This this is crazy. So, let me try to set a mental picture for myself of this. You meet this man. You said GQ. You mentioned Wall Street. So, I'm assuming that when you met him, he's uh, Devonia. You know, um, you said that he wears suits. So that must mean he must be sharp, coming coming to these dates sharp. Uh, now he's been wanting you, donning you. You said that you've gone on uh, horse carriage rides. Okay. You also stated that you've never been to his place. And you mentioned the word mold. See, there's a lot, there's a lot to pick apart here. Because there's so many questions. Mm. Now, I do know in New York, you don't necessarily need a car. So, I'm wondering, these dates, did you guys meet at the place? Did, did he come to your home? Did y'all take a, a Uber, Lyft, a cab? Like, was there any indication that something wasn't right? Uh... You said that you found out he lives in the men's shelter. He must be doing an awful lot to keep himself together uh, in the looks department, clean and, you know, things of that nature. She said GQ uh, to be able to pass this all. Uh, I, uh, I, I really don't even know what to say because it doesn't make any sense. Like, 
Why would somebody go to all of those lengths to do that just to date somebody? And you're saying that he's been working the dinners off or whatever. So I'm, I'm wondering, like, what happens? Like, so y'all go to a restaurant and, uh, and, and what he... Will he take you home or tell you he'll, he'll meet you at the house and uh, you go back to your place and, and he, what, he want, go, and, go and wash the dishes and sweep the floor? But like, I, I, I just can't even phantom it. I, I really can't. It sounds like something that you would hear or see in a, a movie somewhere. Uh, I didn't really know that people actually allow people to do that anymore uh, nowadays. <laughs> I, I'm speechless. I, I really am. Because this, this just sounds like like some crazy mess. It really sounds crazy to me. Um, but I'm glad you found everything out. Uh, you know, I, I'm going to be honest with you. What I'm starting to feel uh, is that there's something more going on here. Because nobody just wakes up and does that, okay? Um, this would have to be something that was practice, which means that you're not the first person he did this with. Um, from your words, I'm hearing that you're more of a strong person. Uh, so I'm quite sure when this all came to a head, you kind of got in this man's face and you, you wouldn't let him. Uh, pull his little Don Juan scheme or whatever on you because that, that's what I'm hearing. That this is some type of scheme. It, it makes no sense otherwise. Why would anybody go to those lengths just for a date, or even, even for sex? Uh, what was the end game here? So had you never found any of this out, what was he going to do? Uh, move into your place, uh, try to lighten your pocketbook. Like, what was the end game? Um, I'm hearing that there was some type of scheme going on. So it's very good that you did get out of it when you did. Let's take it to the cards. The first card says understanding. And see, this is what I'm saying. You understood. You got it. Something, somewhere, in the, in the beginning or somewhere in the course of these dates, your mind began to connect the dots. You said yourself that you saw that he was wearing variations of the same suits. So somewhere, your mind was already starting to connect the dots. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. So, something, something somewhere is not right. And um, as I stated, I feel that there was some kind of scheme being played. I, I really do. So with that... It's good that you, your mom was going down that path of having that understanding that something isn't right. And then you were open to listening to that instead of brushing it aside like a lot of us do and continue on because we like the person or whatever. You more so stayed on that side of, wait a minute, my insides is telling me something's not right. I'm going to do a little homework and find out what's going on. So that was good. The second card says, satisfaction of living. And what I get with that is, see, you have yourself together. I, I can hear that. I can hear that. You have yourself together. And you're good. You're good on your own. You don't need anyone to, uh, to do anything for you. You're not looking for a sugar daddy or somebody to pay the bills or something of that nature. So you're good there. And I'm thinking that because of your lifestyle, whatever this guy was faking to be, he wasn't making it all the way. Those, those acts were not Hollywood performances because somewhere in that armor, something was cracked and you began to see through it. So his living, even though he was faking his living, was not up to par with your living status where you're at so you could see that something somewhere wasn't right and that's good the second card says the third card excuse me where there's smoke there's fire and see that this is exactly what i said did i not say i feel that you are a strong person and see from what i could hear from just what the way you said the words in the card 
that lets me know that you, you were ready. You you were ready to give it to this man, okay? And um, no, nah, he, he wasn't getting this off on you. He was not getting this off on you. And then he didn't get it off. And again, that's very, very good on your end. Listen to those those intuitions that you have, those inner voices a lot of times because a lot of times they're leading you down the right path. And you certainly listen to yours. The next card, the next person up is, and I hope I'm pronouncing this name correctly, Shavena from Atlanta, Ivan. I am a trans girl. I have a good job, home, and man. I did get the whole surgery, and in that, I'm living my dream. I never gave thought to the situation that I now find myself in. As I stated, I have a pretty good man. We've been together for over two years and are discussing getting married. Recently, he's been kicking up the conversation about having kids more. I'm not against it. I try to steer him towards adoption whenever the subject comes up. Of late, it is all that he talks about. His friends all have kids, and he's saying he's ready to bring in the new generation. Problem is, I don't have the equipment to make that happen. So I told him I don't think I can have kids. He says he has a friend who had the same issue and went to a fertility clinic. Now he has three. I have not told him that I wasn't born a female. I fear losing him, us, and the life that we want. Do you have any advice? <sighs> wow. Again, these are very, very sticky situations. Very sticky situations. I know that this is hard. These topics, they really aren't easy to reveal. But in a case like this, you have to come clean. You have to tell the truth. Holding it in will only lead to mess, I promise you. People often react harshly when they realize they've been lied to or deceived. Even if the deception wasn't done so with malice intent, it's cruel to let it continue this way. If you're serious about him, you have to tell him. Just make sure that when you do the reveal, you do it in private. And pick a good time when he's in a good mood. Hit me back and let me know what happens. And now let's take it to the cards. The first card says stability. See, stability. When you talking about y'all have the house, y'all have got... Y'all have got the cars, y'all have got these things, and y'all talking about marriage and, and, and building a family. The foundation of the relationship has to be strong. If that is not stable, the whole damn thing is going to crumble, I'm telling you. And you cannot have a, a stable foundation if it's built on lies. It, just no way. It's just no way. I understand it's scary. I understand it's a very sticky situation. But in this, this man believes you to be a born female. He wants these children naturally. You have to talk to him. Because even now he's talking about going to the doctor. Now, there's no way you're going to be able to uh, hide that. If you actually, if he gets that doctor appointment and y'all go to that doctor, it's going to come out. And it's best that it come out your way than somebody else's. You want to control the narrative on this. The second card says, good intentions, good results. And see, this is what I'm saying. You, you, you got to talk to him. You got to talk to him. You got to tell him. You got to be the one to reveal this. Let it come from you. Because... Just just be honest. Be honest. Be real. Explain your fears. Explain why. You'll be amazed. A lot of times the truth does win over. 
And now the third card said, cast burdens aside. Cast burdens aside. And this is what I'm saying. All, all these untruths. All of this murky stuff of, you know, these lies that have been uh that have been crafted, the, the stories are, oh, I, I don't think I can have kids, throwing the adoption into it every time he's talking. Like, no, we've got to get to the heart of this. We've got to get to the bottom of this. And again, just come, come real. Come honest. And just tell it. Tell the situation. Again, set that mood. Make sure he's in a good mood, everything going good. Sit down, dinner, glass of wine, and just be honest. You'll be amazed. You'll be amazed how, how many times the truth really does work. Have that talk, hit me back. And now, final thoughts. Loves, loves, loves. I've said it several times. People should tell their truth when meeting others with the intent to date or marry. Hiding who you are is never a good thing because when those lies are laid bare, shit happens and it may not be the shit you need or want. People's feelings are serious. If you're in a situation that's not pleasing to you, settling will only lead to the end. It's good to love and help a person, but enabling is not good. Guys, this show is supposed to be about kink, kinky situations, with that said, if you have a bizarre situation and need to give voice to it, I'll take that on too. No subject is too taboo to discuss. Whenever, whatever you're into, whenever you're into it, just be careful. And as always, play safe in your kink. Until next time, and as always, keep it kinky. Guys, we are growing. Come join the Kink fam and let's get wine and kink live shows on Thursdays going. We're going to be discussing live kinky situations and feeling good while doing it. Hit that subscribe button and join the fam.